Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Foster and I am the founder and connector and uh, CEO rather of Connect to Coach. Um, our main business is really to connect coaches with clients uh, and that's exactly what we do in our company um, and we actually find the right coach uh, to match with the right client We're using our coach match system. Uh, we also promote coaches and uh, help them raise their visibility to grow their business. So today I'm really excited because I am here with two of my top health coaches who are going to be talking to you about healthy travel. And isn't that just what we all need, a little bit of healthy travel? So um, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I I've certainly have been away on holidays, uh, vacations, sorry, excuse me, I'm, I'm English, we call them holidays. I've been away uh, traveling and I've been really sick on holidays and I've come back in a way worse state than I went in. And I just wish I knew I knew these girls before I actually... Uh, before all those travels, I think it would have been a lot better for me. Um, so anyway, today we are going to be talking with um, Barb Minemeyer and Catherine Miller. And uh, let's get on and meet them. So Catherine, um, welcome. Uh, Catherine has done extensive worldwide travel as an exchange student, as a chef, as a yogi, as a meditator, as a tourist. And, um, you know, she's currently is a, uh, a holistic health coach and she lives in the Berkshires in Massachusetts and coaches professional women all over the world on how to increase their energy, uh, how to reduce their stress uh, so that they have stamina and vitality to work. Um, so tell me, welcome, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Elizabeth. Lovely to see you too. So, Catherine, tell me, why did you become a coach and, and what do you actually specialize in? So, yeah, so first I want to just say I want, them, I want women to have the energy and stamina to be able to work, but I also want them to have the energy and stamina to be able to play <laughs> and live the life that they, you really love. So, um, especially for ambitious women, work is great. You also want to be able to play. So, um, I became a coach because I'd done a lot of uh, um, research myself based on my family history. I have a lot of family members who are sick. I was also very anxious and fearful as a kid, um, experienced depression, and I wasn't, you know, I had a lot of problems with getting sick every year and all that. And so I got really interested in the relationship between food and health. And then as I learned more about that, I realized there's a lot more to it, and I started. Uh, practicing and teaching yoga and meditation as well. So I wanted to bring all those things together because I could just see that there's so many people who are reaching the kind of prime of their life and they're not able to really fully enjoy it because they don't feel well. They feel like crap sometimes. And so I wanted to use my knowledge and my understanding to support mostly women to uh, really feel fantastic in their bodies, to feel confident in their bodies so they can make the most of the, you know, their later years. For some reason I can't hear your... No, no that's okay. It was me. Okay, I got it. Okay. I put myself on mute. So just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was saying I really like the idea of, uh, you know, having healthy bodies. I think it's so important actually in our, our whole day-to-day -day life. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. Um, and now uh, we have Barb Minemeyer. <clears throat> and um, Barb really helps her clients uh, identify the root cause of their symptoms through dietary and lifestyle changes um, and what she wh how she works with her clients is to you know with a few simple tweaks they're able to uh, rid themselves of uh, what she calls a brain fog which I'm curious to find out more about um, and the stomach bloat and I've definitely been there before um, and fatigue and my word we all have fatigue in our lives that's for sure um, so um, so that you know she works with her with her clients to so that they can you know feel good in their body again um, and maybe it's something that they haven't felt in years so um, welcome Barb so lovely to have you join us today um, so Barb can you tell me uh, why you became a coach and what type of people do you coach and, and what what type of people kind of come to you for coaching and, and why would they come to you 
Thank you, Liz. It's, it's great to be here with you and Catherine both. And I became uh, a coach because I had my own diagnosis. I uh, was feeling fine. I thought I was doing well. I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed. I had water around my heart and not a little bit but quite a bit. And I went through three different doctors, four different medications and I don't take medication and that seemed like overkill to me. So that started me on my journey because then a friend recommended that I see an alternative practitioner and so I went to work with him and he did energy healing, no medications, I was fine, I ended up working with him for a year, so I, I learned a lot about the mind, body and spirit connection and how important that is to our health. And that started me on my path and then I ended up going to the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and after I sat there and at the open house and learned all that I did in that one session I was stunned because what we were being taught, you know, out in the media, what you hear and what the reality is of our health were just totally opposites. So I really dug right into that and I've been very passionate ever since because too many people are suffering today because they're not getting the right information. There's too, there's a lot of misleading information out there. And they're, they're confused. They don't know where to go, where to start first. And so those, you know, when you ask me the people that I work with, well, I work with people who have been to the doctors over and over again. They've gone from one medication to another medication and still nothing has changed. And some of the doctors are not offering them something that's really and truly going to help them either. They, they don't know. They're kind of stumped themselves. If the medication's not working, that's you know all that some know. Uh, so then they are they've tried many different diets. They've lost the weight. They've gained it back again, and they're just sick and tired of not feeling good in their bodies, not feeling the joy in their life. And so when they when they come to me, we I help them get that all in line and get them on a uh, a plan a dietary plan and we also talk a lot about triggers because that's very key too and uh, you know a lot of people are just accepting that because they're getting older oh well my mother had heart disease oh my father had high blood pressure it's, it makes sense that I too would have it and I can't stress enough to my clients and to the people that are listening that that's not how it works. You know, the food that you eat turns those genes on and the food that you eat turns them off. And just because you're getting older, we shouldn't be so uh, accepting that, oh, we can't get around much like we could. We have some joint pain, you know, we're bloated. You know, and too many people are accepting of that and they just sit back and, and they're not living their life to the fullest. So I'm all around. Everybody getting out there, having fun, partying, and living life. I like that. I like that idea. Certainly, uh, you know, having fun and partying, and uh, and but being healthy as well. I think they're they're very key. They're very key. Well. Ladies, I could sit and, and talk to you and just chat with you and find out more about you all evening, but I know that we've got some people that have joined us, and they um, I'm sure there's a lot of information that they want, so I'm going to hand it over to you. Take it away, girls. Wonderful. So um, one of the things that Barbara and I have both traveled a lot, and as you can see, we're both into really feeling our best all the time, and the three of us that so we've talked about some of our worst travel um, <laughs> situations and usually those revolve around getting sick in some way if not having something stolen or ending up somewhere in a airport somewhere with nothing you know like you, your, your luggage is gone and you're trapped and um, so we were just comparing our notes on what we do in order to stay healthy and to kind of think ahead a little bit strategize um, I like to put it as a, you, ex, a, you expect the worst but you, so you can enjoy the best. And so we put together some of these um, travel tips because travel is an adventure. But you want to make sure it's the right kind of an adventure, not an adventure in a hospital somewhere. So to our, the best of our ability, we want to make sure that you know, we're prepared 
to enjoy the places we go to, whether that's a business trip, a conference, a retreat, whether we're traveling in the country or outside of the country, um, to a, you know, to another continent. Um, most of our trips these days include flying of some sort, but they all include usually being with a lot of other people <laughs> in close quarters. You know, so staying healthy while you're on the road is is super important for ultimately enjoying your trip and coming back feeling good. Um, so we've come up with these uh, seven tips, and each tip has a bunch of sub tips and things underneath of it. And we're going to just go over those with you, um, share those with you. And what we'd like you to do is to, in the chat section, if you want to share some of your worst travel experiences, or if you want to share some of your best travel advice, that would be really great. And we can read them out at the end of the the webinar. But um, Barb, why don't you get started with this, with this, this tip number one? All right, all right. One of my favorites. I'm I'm a researcher, so whenever we talk about taking vacations I'm always the one I get on the internet and I'm looking it up and you know uh, one of the key things it's really important the first one of the first things I like to look at is what's the weather going to be like at the time oh, yeah let me let me interrupt you just for one second yeah um, I want to also let people know that there's a PDF that you can download on this site if you look under the um, I forget what it is the offers if you look under the offers you'll find a link to the PDF and you can open it up online and be looking at it while we're talking it over. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and Barb's going to, the first tip is all about the, th the three P's. It's plan, prepare, and pack. But there's a lot more to this than you might think. So, absolutely. sorry, Barb. Absolutely. That's okay. No problem. We want to make sure everybody has what they need as we're going through this. So, yeah, so you always want to know what the weather is going to be like for the time that you're going to be there. You know, whether you need, you know, your slicker if you go to an area where it rains a lot or, you know, if you need a sweater, light jacket, um, it's always good to, to be prepared and, and have what you need at, at hand. And also very important, uh, do you have the appropriate footwear? That is key. I can't tell you how many times I've gone on trips and bought new shoes and, oh, my God. You know, because of course, you know, you have to look a certain way, right? We have to look good. And uh, now I'm at that stage in my life where it's, you know, comfort is key. I, I want to be comfortable. So the appropriate footwear is also important. Um, and clothing, you know, uh, as we just uh, uh, spoke about a minute ago. And are there any cultural restrictions on clothing? You know, are you going to to uh, Turkey or the Middle East, I don't know that you'd be going there now, but uh, or India or you know other places where there may be um, any kind of you know cultural differences in the way that they dress. Um, I don't know that there is, but you know just in case, it's always good to know that because you always want to be. Um, well, I think I know. I'll just chime in here. Just I know through, from traveling in India and and in some Asian countries, sometimes what happens is you get a lot of unwanted attention. So there may not be a legal rule um, against wearing short shorts or <laughs> sundresses or things like that. But um, you'll get a lot of attention that you may not want if that's right. the case. And you know, most of the time we're going to a country to experience their culture and not try to change change them necessarily. So uh, <laughs> unless you're really trying to start a revolution, sometimes it's better to kind of go with a more conservative direction um, so you kind of blend in. Right. You know, and, and last summer, it's funny, we were in Europe, and somebody had said to us, they can always tell who the Americans are. They got yeah. their jean shorts on and their sneakers. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's like the dead giveaway. Um, so then also, uh, is, the ta is the tap water safe in, in mm -hmm. the countries that you're going to be in? You know, that's always good to know because you don't want to end up with, uh, you know, diarrhea and all those other fun things that can happen to you uh, when you drink the the uh, the water that's not safe to drink. So you always want to be be careful about that. Yeah, and we'll have some we'll have some um, you know some of these tips are going to be a little bit overlapping. So we'll go into that more and how to really protect yourself in those situations. Right, absolutely. And what are some of the food challenges that you might encounter? 
now, like we have here gluten, dairy, and, and meat-free. I am gluten, dairy, and, and egg-free. So I always, you know, take my little snacks wherever I go, whether I'm traveling or local, because it's, uh, it's difficult, as you can imagine, to try to find foods that don't have any of that in it. So uh, if you do have allergies, it's always, um, if you do have them, then they're used to, you're used to being prepared uh, most times. You know what it's like. So, uh, so you want to make sure that you are, are prepared for that as well. Uh, and also, you want to take care of yourself before you go. So you want to you want to shop, you want to eat well, you want to get a lot of sleep, and you just want to overall take care of yourself before you. Yeah, I yeah. This is a mindset thing, right? Absolutely. Because Absolutely. I think that when I prepare, you know, normally when I would prepare for a trip before I started to get into all this, I would just be like, okay, what am I going to wear? What am I going to pack? You know. Do I have my passport? Do I have my tickets? Do I have my money? <laughs> Those kind of things, right? That's the preparation. But what I found is there's a lot more to it. And and the mindset is, okay, add to that list. Add to that list. Have I gotten enough sleep? You know, have I been, you know, eating well so that I don't start off on a trip already at a deficit? And right. so you know, the planning is one thing, and then the preparation, you know, gathering the things together. I love shopping for the stuff I want to take on a trip. Um, but then, yeah, taking care of yourself, that's that's the big one that most people overlook. You're right, and that, that is so true, Catherine, because, you know, most of us think, oh, I'll be all right. I'm just going to pack my clothes, and, you know, I don't have to worry about this or worry about that. And we never really stop and think about, you know, taking care of ourselves, nourishing ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we, uh, as we get ready to travel on, on a big trip. So that's, that's a good point. Absolutely. Definitely. Okay. So now packing. Don't leave it till the last minute. I mean, I'm kind of anal. I make checklists. I write things <laughs> down because, you know, how many times, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, where you know you get to where you're going, you're like, oh, dang, I left my belt. Oh, I left my favorite earrings, or you know, you left out a pair of shoes, and that's happened to me one too many times. So I make a list of what I'm going to bring, and I check it off as I as I put it in the bag. So uh, that's that's great. That's yeah. really great. And I and and I think the other thing that I've noticed is I actually started to put it in my calendar, and. Um, I, it just makes it's just so much less stressful because what I find is I plan my work day out and I plan you know all the other things I have to do, but I don't actually. And then suddenly I get to the end of the day, it's like, and usually it's like it's like what's written here is is I'm at 12 p.m. I'm packing and I have to get up at like 4 a.m. to get to the airport in time for a 6 a.m. flight or something, you know. And it's it's really crazy. You don't get any sleep that night, which already puts you off on a bad mm -hmm. foot especially if you're going to be jet lagged. So, <laughs> um, oh so, yeah, there's, there's yeah. nothing worse. When I go to bed at midnight and I know I got to get up at 3.30, yeah. I lay there afraid I'm never going to get to sleep. And you know what? I never do. <laughs> right, I, just, right. I just never do. You're worried you're not going to wake up in time, you're going to be late for the flight, yeah. all these other things. So that's why Absolutely. I think you just put it in your calendar and then you – you know, it, it's like you've got that time spoken for and you're not going to fill it up with something else. And I always give myself more time than I think I'm going to need because I'm like, oh, I can do that in five minutes. And no, usually it takes me a couple hours if I'm going, sure. on, a, if I'm going on a good long trip with a lot of different things happening. Um, it, can take, it can take some time. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so there's I some just, other things in this PDF which are, yeah, go ahead. No, I just wanted to... Um, quickly just mention before we get out of the packing zone here that you know it's always good uh, to take layering options when you're when you're traveling for clothing because you don't have to really you know how many of us pack more than we even wear I mean I know I'm not alone in that but uh, I always end up taking more than I need but as the more I travel the more more I learn to layer clothes so I can wear items more than once and have a different look Okay, and also for yeah. the changes in the temperature, you always want to have, you know, color coordinate your clothes that are kind of like basic colors that can go with most clothes that you have in your closet. So, uh, so I just wanted to cover that as well. 
Yeah, no, it's great because I, I think, you know, dragging a heavy bag around, the lighter you can make your luggage, the better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so um, that's – and one of the things that, that Barb and I both talked about is how to anticipate trouble on a trip because things happen. You know, it's like it, stuff happens. I was just went to a family gathering, and my sister was supposed to be there, and she was literally two days late and ended up driving – you know, six hours home instead of flying because her flights kept getting canceled and her luggage was lost. And so she arrived and had to go to Target and buy clothes and you know, all this kind of stuff. It was, it was like the worst. It was a nightmare kind of thing that you could imagine. So, you know, part of um, what could have helped with that is if she had had some of these essentials packed in her bag. And this is something that you turned me on to, Barb. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It only has it only happens one time, and then you learn that lesson. Yeah. You know that happened to me. I, my luggage didn't arrive. I had a business meeting the next morning, and my makeup, everything was in my suitcase. Mm -hmm. So yeah, lesson learned. So I bring all my toiletries in my uh, carry-on. You know, uh, of course, all my money, any paperwork for my trip. Everything that I need, essential things like that, like the hotel information like you have in here, contact numbers, mm -hmm. you know, and of course my healthy snacks, but they go wherever I go anyway, so I'm pretty good about that. Yeah, and for people that have prescription meds, you know, you want to have those in that carry-on, you know, I mean, there's just certain things that you, if you know you can't go without them for more than 24 or 48 hours, you should have them in that bag. Um, and it's it's just makes a huge huge difference. And they don't ha it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just again, you know, it's just it's just knowing that you that you have that safeguard helps a lot. Right. And if you have to spend the n a night in an airport, which I've had to do many times, you know, just having a toothbrush is fantastic. Right. <laughs> Not having to yeah, buy. Because <laughs> hey, if 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 you have to buy some clothes at the end of the day, that's not as bad. But when you yeah. lose your, it's like a personal thing, you know. When you lose your like, yeah. your favorite blush, you know, the color that, <laughs> or your lipstick that just is a perfect color for you, or your mm -hmm. eyeshadow. I mean, they're like personal, you know. Yeah. And hey, you don't want to lose that. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So um, the third tip is manage jet lag. Oh wait a minute, we forgot something, Catherine. Oh, oh tell so me. So important. If you get delayed or your you know your flights change all the, you need to have a good book mm -hmm. or good music yeah. on your on your iPhone or your laptop whatever and movies yeah because boy if you're stranded without that stuff it's it's not fun I'm always jealous when I um, see somebody who's downloaded their movies in advance because the airport Wi-Fi is so slow and you know it doesn't really work for that kind of thing and. So that's a this that's a great great tip. <laughs> yeah, can't forget that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's the fun stuff. You can't leave the fun at home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now manage jet, managing jet lag, and um, the thing is, when you cross time zones, even if it's just a couple, you can feel a bump in there. But um, you'll see that there's some tips in here for for each of these tips. There's some advice that's gonna um, go across a lot of different tips and one of them is just staying hydrated so when if you drink plenty of water not the day before you fly but if you make a habit of staying hydrated and so if you don't normally stay hydrated at least start a week before you go because then you're going to be in really good shape uh, some of the worst things that I've seen for people who are um, traveling the worst um, experiences have come from people just working so much and forgetting to eat, forgetting to drink, and then they go on a trip and it's supposed to be a relaxing vacation and they're so dehydrated, they get on that plane and they just get laid low and end up missing days of their trip. So staying hydrated is one of the easiest things you can do to manage jet lag. Um, it seems simple, it is simple, but so many people don't do it and that's why they have such bad effects. Um, get, also getting plenty of sleep the week before your flight, if not the year before your flight, whatever. Sleep is just, again, it's so important. And if you have 
had been getting good sleep, then your ability to be flexible and get into the cycle of the place where you're going, it's going to just be so much easier. It's not going to take so much out of you. Um, the, the other thing is is eating well. Like um, most of us get super busy when we have when we're going to go away. We're so busy, and again, we end up eating, compromising, eating foods that aren't the best for us. And you want to make sure that you're getting plenty of fruits and vegetables, and just that that you're actually e eating even better before you go away, if that's possible. Um, and then, uh, Barb, you you have uh, you, you told you me know, about I this was, about. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I just wanted to share something. Um, on my at last summer, you know, I I learned, you know, about hydrating like a week before you leave because I didn't do it. I, I'll fess up, I didn't do it. And when I landed, my legs and my feet were swollen for like the first week that I was there. It had never happened to me before. And I had a rash. There might have been something else. I don't know whether it was the airport food or, or the airplane. I don't know what happened, but I had a rash from my knees all the way down to my ankles, and I was swollen. Oh, wow. And it was the craziest darn thing, and it took over a week for it to dissipate. And, of course, we were walking everywhere, so was I uncomfortable? You betcha. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so lesson learned. Good point. Yeah, exactly. My brother had the same thing. He went to Spain and he, he knew he was dehydrated and he ended up with the worst migraines that literally for lasted for three days. And, you know, so, you know, we go, traveling is, even if it's, especially, you know, whether it's for vacation or whether it's for business, and if it's for business, you really want to be on your game. Most of the time, when you're traveling for business, you're, you're meeting up with either new people or clients or things like that, and you don't want to be, um, you know, subpar. Uh, so then the other thing though about jet lag is really trying to adjust as simply as you can to the new um, time zone. So yes. arriving in the evening you want to really try and relax and and ease in, you know, make yourself tired and I have some tips on some different supplements and things you can take with you to help with that in a, in a kind of more natural way. But, and then the thing is if you arrive in the day and you're tired and you want to, you know, the best thing to do is go out, take a walk, do something stimulating to keep you going till at least early evening so that you can just start. It doesn't have to be perfect the first day, but the more you can get close to this, uh, the sleep cycle of the country you're in, the better it's going to be for you, you know, each day. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, what's interesting is they, they say that when you land, if you're landing like during the day, to really stick it out and don't take that nap. They say taking that nap after you get in is one of the worst things you can do in terms of trying to acclimate to a new time zone. And also caffeine. You yeah. Know, you think you want to have more caffeine to keep you keep you jacked up. And, uh, you know, it's, it's also one of the worst things you can do. And they say alcohol and caffeine both. Um, yeah. You know, the day before and after. Uh, and during actually your flight. Yeah, yeah. I tend. I think you know. There's so going to be so many opportunities. Usually on a vacation, there's going to be so many opportunities to have a nice cup of coffee or a or a, or a beautiful glass of wine or something you know local, some kind of you know the alcohol of whatever place you're in. And and you know that's usually part of vacations. It's usually part of business trips. So avoiding it you know, the day before travel, during travel, and the day after is not that difficult if you look at it that way. You'll have plenty of opportunities. So, um, again, it's, it's sort of thinking ahead. This is part of your planning is just plan to, to do that. Just plan to drink a lot of water. Drink soda water with lime and nobody's going to know there's no alcohol in it if that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if you're worried about what other people are thinking, yeah, put that, put the lime in there. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So then, tip number four, we're just going straight to the the core thing. It's hydrate. So we're, the reason I'm putting this in here again is because it stands alone. It's also part of some of the other things, like the, you know, avoiding jet lag and um, practicing prevention and things like that. But it's basically 
stands on its own is something that you really need to do when you're traveling. The thing is when your body gets dried out from dehydration, um, it, it just makes it a, a better host for all the different viruses and bacteria that you're coming in contact with as a matter of course. And staying hydrated is one of the ways to keep your immunity up and keep your energy up, keep your digestion moving. It's really important. A lot of people um, get constipated when they travel, so um, making sure you drink enough water is going to make sure that you keep your bowels moving, which you're going to feel so much better. Um, so starting the day with at least 16 ounces of water and then what I recommend is having electrolytes every day and I, I have these little packets and I practice I was just up on a vacation at high altitude for a couple of weeks I was above 8,000, uh, 9,000 feet every day and I took these electrolytes it was very dry, very hot and um, you can also get them in a powder form uh, in the form of emergency and some of the other um, things that are out there this is just one of the there's some that have a lot better ingredients than others, and I have links in this PDF for you. But um, that is one of the most basic things to stay hydrated, keep yourself hydrated, is take those electrolytes. Don't wait to get dehydrated. Just take them, and that will prevent that from happening. If you're really into whole foods and you like to do more of a food-based intervention, then you can take a little bag of chia seeds with you and just throw a tablespoon of chia seed in your water the night before. I give it a few shakes and by the morning that will be fully hydrated and what that does is it helps keep your body hydrated. They absorb so much water that when you drink that water with the chia seeds in it's kind of makes it creates a little bit of a slippery water. It's like little tiny tapiocas in it and it's actually quite refreshing and delicious because it also has the protein fat and fiber in it so it it helps um, keep keep you feeling your energy stable, your blood sugar stable, all those good things when you're traveling that you don't want to mess up. And then I also recommend just taking a 16 ounce water bottle and carrying it with you all the time, making sure you refill it in places where if the, if the water is safe there. Um, if you're traveling in a country where the water is not really safe, usually you have to buy bottled water. So that's a, that's a whole different kettle of fish. But um, yeah, that, that 16 ounce water bottle, that's something I just uh, have a habit of taking with me anywhere I go and it's 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 amazing how much better you're going to feel if you do that. Right, right. And you know on your um, on our next section you know about practicing prevention you know I never knew that these things had existed. Last summer time that I ever had a, uh, a supplement powder that I could take and actually pour into a glass of water or a bottle of water and shake up mm -hmm. and get the nutrients that, that I'm so used to getting on a daily basis when I'm home. You know, like sometimes when you're traveling, they're not so uh, available in different parts yeah. where you travel. And, and then you're, you're like, okay, you know, I'm always bringing apples and nuts where I go. But, you know, the green powder uh, I didn't have until last summer. And I have to tell you what a difference it makes you know, yeah. to be to yeah. be prepared and, and have that with you mm -hmm. and to get the nutrients that you're used to getting to keep you up at your, you know, performing at your optimal self. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty incredible. Like I have um, just some packets here that I <laughs> I have a little travel kit that I'll show you later. But Catherine's our packet queen. We love Catherine. <laughs> She's got all the little gadgets for us. What I found is that um, for a lot of us, you know, we if you're into eating healthy, if you're into being healthy, if you're into to a high energy kind of life where you're, you need stamina and you need strength and things like that, breakfast is one of the most important things. And I find that when you travel, you know, they say breakfast included, but a lot of it's just, just a bagel or a croissant and you just, it just doesn't really do the trick. So, you know, taking individual packets that have uh, protein, greens, grit powder in it, uh, probiotics, flax, all these kinds of things, they just help get you off on the right foot. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing about prevention is a lot of times, you know, if you go to a country where they're used to having a lot of tourists, they might, you know, they, they might have a lot of places, restaurants and different things like that that are not really that great, um, that are the first, it's the first thing you might encounter depending on where you go. What you'll notice is the locals will eat at a 
cert at certain places. That's where you want to go. Is you want to go where the locals are. You also want to see what's what are the foods that are naturally eaten here. What are the things that are grown locally, uh, made locally? What are the what are the common recipes here? The traditional foods, and really try to hit those restaurants because those are usually going to be really good, um, and they're not always the ones that you're going to be directed to. Um, when you first ask. The other thing is if, you, if you're in a country and you know already that you can't drink the tap water, then you should really only eat freshly cooked foods. There's nothing prepared on the street. It's really important because I, I've, I've done this so many times. I'm a, I'm a real foodie. I love to eat food. I love to eat traditionally prepared foods and um, I love trying new things. And, but whenever I've eaten something, I tend to get sick pretty easily, as you might guess from these, all these tips. But uh, <laughs> if you, um, if it, you know, just don't eat the street food. It's unless, unless you, you know, it's, 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 it's a really got high reviews or something. It's a really safe place. Um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of Westerners or a lot of expats, you know, eat there. Then you know, maybe it's okay. Well, um, I, I have a confession to make. There's not much anywhere on the street that I will eat yeah, anymore yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's not the fault of the people. I mean, they're, they're doing the best they know how to, and usually the local people will have a certain um, resistance to the right, types because of things they're, that they're eating. Yeah. They're used to it. They're used to it already, yeah. Yeah, but you're Definitely. not, you know, unless you've lived there for a while. So, um and the other thing is to bring hand or body wipes for those times you don't have water, for example, to wash your hands. I can't tell you how many times I've had, you know, I've been touching all these different things everywhere, and I just wish I had some clean water to wash my hands or my face. And uh, having some, they have some really fantastic ones now uh, that are, you know, biodegradable and no sense and and all of that, and they're 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 really really useful. So. Um, on my last trip to the tropics, I was in Costa Rica, and I was going to a place they had no bathrooms. I was just out in the jungle, and I had these these hand wipes, and they were perfect. They were just what I needed. Um, so you you know they're Absolutely. they're good almost anywhere you go. Um, so then the sixth thing is to be a connoisseur. Now this is a travel tip that I love. It's like because you know your bottom line here is you want to indulge in what's best, and you want to leave everything else. You just it, don't touch it, basically, or just do. You know, if you have to eat something that's not great, just have a little bit, just enough to keep you from fainting from hunger. Uh, I always choose quality over quantity because one of the things that people hate the most about going on vacation is they gain weight. Mm -hmm. They they go looking their best because they've been exercising, they want to look great in a bikini, and then they come home and all the five ten pounds, it's all back. And so I'm like, why, why should we have to go through that? There are ways to avoid that. And one is to just focus on the best foods, the most interesting foods, the highest quality foods, and then savor them. Really, like, enjoy the food. So even if you're eating stuff that you wouldn't normally eat, like gelato in Italy or something, you don't have to eat, like, a quart of it. Just taste, taste, <laughs> taste it, <laughs> taste it, enjoy it, share that enjoyment with other people, and then move on to the next thing. There's going to be plenty of opportunities to try different foods. You don't have to eat all of everything. Right. Um, and then a simple thing that, that Barbara and I were just talking about is don't eat the food on the plane because the food on the plane is just dead food. I mean, the food they provide on the plane, that's what I mean by that is – it's what I found over and over again is whenever I eat the food on the plane, it always messes up my digestion. I always feel worse at the other end. I my jet lag wor is worse. Everything, so I'm just like, why eat it? It's not that great. Yeah. I'm not I missing mean, anything. E even if you order a vegetarian, you know, I always get yeah. the uh, the healthy because uh, I can't have all the sauces and stuff. You know, even if it looks clean, you know, and I I eat it or I have eaten it, and then I'm like swollen afterwards. Yeah, you know, and uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's always good to uh, bring your own. Yeah, B Y O F. Fresh. I like to bring foods like fresh vegetables, so they won't let you bring, you know, bring water from home and that kind of thing. But you can bring fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and those things are full of water. They'll help you stay hydrated. They're crunchy. They fill you up, 
And then you just bring a few nuts and seeds or crackers or other things to augment that. But um, well, they don't they don't stop you, Catherine, right? When you because I know I I put a couple apples in my bag, and somebody said to me, "You got no, through with those apples? That. They let you yeah. in?" And and uh, but you've never had that experience, right? No, never. Okay, good. They're fine with that. <laughs> so um, for those of you that are looking at the PDF, tip number seven is create your own healthy traveler kit. Now, I, my motto is prepare for the worst so you can experience the best. And I just put a few things there. This is something I carry on the plane with me. So I have a couple of, um, I'll show you actually. So I have a couple of packets of, um, I have this little bag, and I put that in my bag. And inside that, I have a packet of um, some miso, uh, green vibrant. So this is a green drink, you know. So if I'm, uh, I have miso soup. So you just ask them for hot water, and you can make your own miso soup on the plane or anywhere. This is the electrolytes, and I usually carry some of the caps as well. And uh, then I have some of this. I usually carry a couple packets of this. Um, this or some other type of uh, protein powder so that you know if I do get stuck and you know there's I, I can't get to some food or things are closed like at night you have often got stuck at night in the airports and nothing's open and I'm starving so I have some things here that I can that I can eat that are going to keep me going and keep me healthy so that's just a and it doesn't take up much space at all you know it just weighs a few ounces and I have that in that little bag in my bag in my carry-on so that and a lot of times I never end up using it. But and isn't it great just to have options to know yes. that you're not held captive yes. by the food court and the food that they serve? Exactly. You know exactly. that you can really take care of yourself. It, that's so true. It's and and I I've just found that um, other people <laughs> that I'm traveling with appreciate it too because I usually bring enough for at least two people. <laughs> You're usually bailing everybody out, right? It's true, yeah, <laughs> it's true, um, which is great. You know, it's like, why not? So these are some foods listed here, basically. They're, they're the things like, so if you're interested in having things that are more food-based, then you can bring the protein um, shakes, you can bring the soup, the chia seeds, supplements like um, the electrolytes in the pillar powder form and the umeboshi plums, which is this is quite an eccentric or exotic kind of ingredient. It's a, but they're they're supposed to be they have an almost mythical reputation amongst certain travelers for keeping you hydrated. They're salty, they're sour, they're tart. If you have uh, nauseousness from motion sickness or things like that, all you have to do is eat a little bit of this umeboshi plum and it will instantly you know, calm your stomach. You know, um, excuse, just just let me interrupt you one second yeah. because I had never heard of this. Yeah. Uh, I've heard of the, um, the, the plum, the sauce that you cook with, the umeboshi plum there, but I never heard of these um, ball, I mean, are they an actual plum? Is this in powder form or how, how is it so the umeboshi plums are pickled plums that come from Japan. They're pink, and they, you know, you can take them just like in a Ziploc bag or something like that. And they, um, you can just have them when you need to. Or you can have a little bit every day as a preventative thing. And then they have these little things called ume balls, which is the concentrated umeboshi. And it's so it's much smaller. You can just suck on those. They're not salty. You know, but that, that's something I put in there for the people who really, before you even go on the trip, you want to do something really exotic and try something new. Um, you can just take electrolytes and do it that way. That's that'll also work. Um, so the idea isn't that you take all of these things with you because you probably need like a you know, a, a, another small bag <laughs> to put all the stuff in. So let me ask you, would that be something like a healthier version of a Tums or something? Oh, definitely. Okay, yeah. I just wanted yeah. so we can, you know, yes. see yeah, what definitely. we're equating it to so people know. Yeah, that's great. Good, good. That's great. So I just want to go through these kind of quickly, but for those of you that have the PDF, you can see um, one of the things, migraines, constipation, insomnia, all these things can really mess up a, a great trip. And so Calm, it's a magnesium drink, and it comes in little individual packets, which are perfect for travel. All you have to do is mix it with a little 
um, hot, doesn't even need to be boiling water, uh, just to dissolve it. And that will help you to keep your bowels in good shape. It, it helps uh, prevent migraines. It helps you to relax in general, and it helps with sleep at night. So it's a good thing to take before you go to bed. And, of course, I always take some smooth mood tea. I don't necessarily yeah, need it. Me but too. When you're in a different country and you're drinking different water, eating different food, and you're, you're maybe like six hours or eight hours off your normal sleep cycle, it's really easy to get constipated, even if you're never constipated otherwise. So it's good to bring something that will help you to um, prevent that or, or to cure it if you need to. So smooth move tea is one thing. There's a bunch of different teas out there, but I always bring a couple bags of that just in case. And yeah, then, let's um, face it, Catherine, there's nothing that's going to make you crankier than being constipated <laughs> on vacation. Trust it's me, terrible. been there, done that, yeah. and then, yeah. oh man, oh man, like, stand back, everybody, because <laughs> I am cranky. Yeah, yes, you just absolutely. don't feel good. It's just the worst experience possible, and you don't feel like you're eating, and you just, you know, so all the good things you want to experience on a trip get compromised. Absolutely. Yeah. So then, liver and detox support, because look, I love to have... Uh, you know, especially if I'm going to wine country, I love to have some wine. Um, I've, I tested these uh, drink well packs. They're, they're in a similar packet to this. And basically you can get them in a bottle or in little packets. And I tested them out on some of my nieces and nephews on my, this last because they were going out trying cocktails every night. So I said, here, take this before. Here, take this after. And they were amazed at how much better they felt. And I tried them as well, and they, I thought they were were very good. So it's their kind of vitamin support for your liver. Um, activated charcoal is another thing. So if you've eaten anything and you can tell that you know it wasn't good, it's having a bad effect on you, take the activated charcoal as a preventative or you can take it even after um, things have started to happen because uh, so I just take that with me whenever I go anywhere because you just never know when you're gonna eat something that's been contaminated in some way. Um, and then essential oils are really easy. I've started taking those now on trips. And lemon is just this, you can add it to your water. It's an immune system booster. Um, lavender reduces stress and anxiety. It helps you to sleep. It's an anti-inflammatory, so it's also good for the immune system. Um, on guard is an essential oil blend by doTERRA. And that's, that's wonderful just to have on the flights with you. Um, to protect you from just exposure to unfriendly germs. And, you know, because we're not always going, in spite of all the advice I'm giving you, you know that you're not always going to be getting on a flight in the best shape. <laughs> you may not have <laughs> slept the night before. You may not have been hydrated like we've told you to. So then having these other things, not all of them, but, you know, whichever ones you think are right for you. And tea tree oil, of course. That's if you get cuts or scrapes or blisters or different things. It's a great... Um, thing to help heal and to prevent infections and things like that. So what I've done at the end of this PDF is I've put a lot of links so you can do your own research on this. I recommend that if you do decide to take any of these things with you, that you test them on yourself first, or other people oh, yeah. like I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I tested everything that I have on here before I put it up here, so I know that I liked it, and I know it worked well for me. Um, but you don't want to take something and then realize you hate it, you know, it has stevia in it or something, and you hate the taste of it and that you're not going to use it. It's just a waste of time and a waste of money and space. So um, these are our, our basic tips. They're, believe me, I've, I've practiced these things for years. I've learned from all my mistakes, and I know Barb has too. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. so we... So these are, you know, as health coaches, as people who like to be healthy when we travel and we like to enjoy ourselves without, you know, having a bad effect, these are the things that we've found have really prevented us from having a bad trip, so to speak. And uh, so we wanted to share those with you. We'll be sending the PDF, the link to that out if, if, if some of you aren't able to download it now. We're going to be sending an email out with that link to the PDF. And... We also just wanted to share with you um, quickly a, a trip that we're going to be taking to Italy that you might be interested in. Um, so, oh, yeah. Yeah, so I think Elizabeth is going to make me the presenter. Well, okay, there we go. And I'm going to share my screen with everyone because we have some great pictures. Um, 
that uh, Barb took one of her one of her. Um, so how's that, Barb? Can you see that? All right. I don't see it. Okay. We'll ask Elizabeth. Is she? Oh, I think I have to choose it. That's what I have to do. Okay. There we go. There we are. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Catherine and I are taking a group of people to the Apulia region of Italy in October, and it's a trip that, um, I mean, I've done, this is my third time, um, and it, it came about as a, a trip I took with my family and being a health coach and, and being in a culture and area where you know, people, you know, their trees, their backyards are bursting with vegetation, fig trees, lemon trees. They go out in their backyard, they pull from what, what they have there to make their dinner. Neighbors make uh, homemade fresh cheeses and, and it's just, it was, a, as a health coach when I went there and experienced their lifestyle, uh, it was just amazing to me. Siestas in the afternoon, uh, it, and and just you just felt the love and the warmth of these people. It was just amazing. And it wasn't just our cousins. It was it was like throughout you know Italy, people were just so gracious and so loving and so kind. And and I saw it more so in the southern part where we're going to go. Actually, actually in, in the bottom of the boot of Italy, there uh, we'll be going to Matera, Lecce. Uh, a lot of different towns, but it was just the um, the warmth of the people uh, and the foods, and you know, it's something that's just who they are. It's their nature. It's their culture. Where we have to strive so f hard here to achieve uh, a lifestyle like that, you know, where you're eating healthy, you're eating from the ground, you know, and out of the sea, and and off the trees and they have their own uh, olive orchards there and uh, it was just incredible and I was like you know what and Benny's a travel agent Benedetto so he's like we have to bring some people I said you better believe it because people need to see this they need to have this experience so so that's exactly. how we got started on this and I'm so excited to have Catherine on the trip with us because she's going to bring meditation and yoga and she's going to do more about the essential oils on the trip and um, go yeah, ahead. Just a, yeah, but it just um, part of that is because we call this the pleasures of Puglia because you know we want to set this up in a way that it's just this trip that's completely enjoyable so the even the, the, the meditation and yoga and essential oils that we do in the morning is just to help prepare us for the pleasures of the day. Right. And that's kind and of also, how we... And also, it. too, I think, Catherine, that we both agree how important, you know, nutrition and pleasure and connections are in our daily lives, whether we're traveling, whether we're home. It really is the key, you know. Yeah, oops. Yeah, that brings us to, you know, one of the things we're going to experience on this trip is Carmelina. Ah, yes. Carmelina is the best, best cook. She is awesome. And uh, we had a cooking class with her, and she taught us how to make pasta. You know, there's a certain way that you have to roll it and, and, and do it. And she made this, this wonderful dish. And um, and she does it with just such love and joy and caring. And actually, in this picture, uh, Carmelina has got the apron on, obviously, and Benedetto is standing next to her, and Joe uh, is also there. She'll be with us on this trip again. And her and Benedetto are cousins, actually. Right. So um, right. yeah, but it was really um, it was really a fun time. And we made more things than pasta, which you'll see as we go through. Yeah, that the, the thing that was really exciting to me, and because I've been to Italy many times, and I haven't been to this particular section, and I do my own foraging and, and grow my own vegetables and things, but here in Italy, we're actually going to be going out foraging for some wild herbs and foods, right? And then right, with putting Carmel them into the meal. Yeah, Carmelina hops on her bike, boy. And she trucks down the road and into the wild, and she pulls like this picture on the left. You see is fennel, 
and that other thing is chicory from the wild and wow. she would go pick that. I mean it's all over the place in, in yeah. Apulia and mm -hmm. so we're going to go foraging with her uh, perhaps on bikes perhaps not we would just have to see how that all rolls out and then mm -hmm. the picture on the right is is the chicory uh, cooked uh, with some fava beans, pureed fava beans. Wow, I mean, sounds just, absolutely delicious. <laughs> don't you just want to dig right into that? Yeah. yeah. So that was also Carmelina as well. Um, she That's great. is, yeah, she can run circles around me in the kitchen for sure. So, I mean, part of the thing is just like you said, is we're going to be going to all these amazing local orchards for olive orchards and participating in the harvest right yeah and this is was this was us harvesting on our last trip uh, you know with the rakes and we just you just raked all the olives down and you see the tarp on the right where uh, Valentino and Benedetto and Donna are actually picking up the tarps and then dumping the olives into the buckets and that's yeah. that's how it's collected you just threw it all to the ground they, they pick up the tarps and dump it in that's amazing. And, yeah. So Valentino's and, also, he's a professional olive oil taster, right? Yeah, well, he's actually, he's got his Ph.D. in agronomy, and he is a professional olive oil taster, and he took us through the process mm -hmm. of the olive oil making. He actually had us, he had a, a lot of different samples. And he'll be doing that this time. And he'll be doing it this time, yes, absolutely. i got to stay in the present. He'll be doing, <laughs> we'll be doing it, you know, I'm so, you know, yeah. All over it, uh, but anyway, so we will be doing all these things uh, on our trip in October, and he he told us, which I never really knew, that to tell a really good olive oil is if when it goes down your throat, it's very spicy in taste. He said that's a sign of a good olive oil. That's fantastic. So, so yeah. So I'm really I'm really looking forward to that because I've I've tasted olive oils but I've never had a professional sort of giving me tips. Yeah, so there's, there's a, a lot way. of tasting going to be going on here because also there's an old uh, uh, family owned uh, dairy farm where they've made cheese for a yes, long time. Yes, yes, Lena and Anna. It's mother and daughter, and actually their grandfather started this farm, and we went in there and they took the milk directly from the cow. And they put it in the vats, and the guy was stirring it and stirring it and kneading it and playing with it. And and we took it out, and you can see us uh, playing with it there, kneading it and and making it a little, you know, yeah. thicker in, in substance. And then we put it in these baskets, and then they have to set. And you can see uh, yeah. Lena there pointing to, they make regatta. Uh, this was a, um, I forget the name of this cheese, something of the salt. Benedetto told me. I forget the Italian word for it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so these are all the different cheeses. And then what's great is after we do this, we spend time there at the farm. Then we go, we leave, and we go by the sea. We get breakfast. Whoops. Well, we're not going to drink first because it's going <laughs> to be early. <laughs> but yes, we're going to go. We're going to go by the sea. We have some pictures to show of that as well. So, so we're going to go. To the sea, and then is that? And the then we're going to go drink. You know what I'm saying? But because <laughs> then, you know, that's kind of perfect, though, Catherine. Because yeah. we're going to go by the sea, have breakfast and coffee, and mm -hmm. and just hang out, which is, and maybe we'll do some meditation there on the cliffs. Who knows? And then we go back to the farm, and they lay out their 12 most popular cheeses, and they give us the wine and the cheese. And they're just oh, wow. very sweet, and they, they talk. Benny uh, translates for us. So the one woman uh, speaks English, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they're just lovely. So we're going to do that as well. Yeah. So, all so now we're going to drink, Catherine. Talk. Yes. Take us away to take <laughs> us away to the alcohol. Well, it's interesting <laughs> because we're going to be doing all this this beautiful, this wonderful eating. There's going to be fresh seafood by the sea. You know, there's the all the pasta is made from wheat with that's grown locally. The foods are foraged or grown locally. Um, there's all the freshest, most delicious stuff. And then it's all in the context of this amazing history, which for us Americans is just mind boggling yeah. because you know we're just we just don't have that kind of thing around here. And so one of the things we're gonna see is the Trulia. Yes. Which, yeah. These little truly houses, you know, when you when you pull up here, they it's almost it reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. And, and all the little people because the homes that they just look like out of that movie and um, 
and they're really wonderful and we actually went into one and this is a picture of the kitchen in there where everything everything's all cemented and uh, everything's built into the walls like that and uh, you know in these little homes they had their horses or their mules that stayed in there with them wow. I mean and there weren't big spaces either but everybody right. was all in one room so it was pretty um, wow. just the history it's just yeah. there's nothing like it here we are here's the city <laughs> And this is, I mean, the great thing about this is even though we're going to be there in, at the end of October, there's still, it's still warm enough to swim, and yeah. there's not so many tourists because it's past the tourist season. So it's actually, you know, you kind of get the beaches more to yourself, and the, I mean, the water is that color. It's yes. It's actually probably even better than what you see there. <laughs> we will actually be coming here. This is where we'll be, I believe, after the... Uh, the cheese uh, oh, okay. yeah, for, for breakfast. Well, this is where we'll be. So Wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. And then there's a few different Leche. cities we're going to be seeing. So Lecce is uh, one of yes. the ones that I've, even my friends that live in Italy, excuse me, but <laughs> even the ones that are in Italy are um, saying to me, oh, man, you've got to go to Lecce. It's one of the oh, most beautiful cities. It's, it's amazing. It's a walled-in city, and every piece of... of um, brick or stone came was brought down from the caves that made that entire wall around the city it's really wow. amazing and this picture on the left is a, an amphitheater that when they were digging or you know they're always finding new things when they yeah. were trying like the last time we were there they were the the uh, the, the city had given uh, or so whoever gave them money to make a park in, oh. in, in Lecce and they were digging to start making this park and as they were digging they came across another whole part of a city that was underneath and they had it all fenced off and nobody could go near it so perhaps when we return we'll get to see what what that is but here wow. was an amphitheater and they do mm -hmm. shows here as you can see they have the chairs all set up wow. and the church wow. on the right is the Santa Croce church Wow. which is very Baroque influence and the details are just stunning and wow. when we go this time the scaffolding won't be there that will right. all be done but it's 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 beautiful beautiful wow. and then finally the last city is, is is Matera which is a cave city I understand it's actually been carved out of the rock and the hotel we'll be staying at is actually the rooms uh, it feels like you're in a cave a very beautiful cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're going to be in any cave, that's a cave you want to be in. Luxurious. Yeah. Yes, luxurious exactly. cave. Yeah, so that's also a very exciting place. And we had this wonderful uh, tour guide who took us around and took us in these old churches that were like from the 1400s or even perhaps before that had the original paintings what was left of them on the walls you couldn't take any pictures in there because they didn't want you ruining the the quality of, of what was left there but um, it's just amazing it's you'll see if you come and join us you will absolutely see so um, go yes, ahead, and that's the, then that's the reason just what Barb said if, if you come and join us you'll you'll see and I, this is you know, this trip has been carefully curated and designed to, to give, you know, the maximum pleasure for, you know, it, everything. This, the beauty, the visual beauty, you know, the, the um, central beauty of the food, um, being near the ocean and be able to go in the ocean. Uh, the hotels themselves are all five-star hotels. So we wanted to, for the people who chose to sign up for this webinar and, and be a part of it, we wanted to make sure that you had a special offer and you can use you can go to um, yourhealthytruth.com slash pages slash Italy and you'll come to a page that has a brief description of the trip with some pictures and there's a couple of um, there's a couple of links at the bottom one is for the actual itinerary so you can look the itinerary over and the other ones where you can go so you can actually register for the trip and you can use this code it's all in capitals, Apulia 2016, and that will actually get you $300 off the trip. So yep. that's a nice, <laughs> that's a nice gift we wanted to give you. Um, we.
do need to book hotel rooms and do that kind of thing. So we need people who, if you are interested and you have any questions, um, you can contact uh, Barb and I. Our contact information yeah, is on the site. Is, yeah, is on the site, and it's on the PDF with all the travel tips and things as well. Would you like to say a little bit more, Barb, about this? No, I just, I, I just. Uh... I just can't say, you know, I just can't say enough about this trip. I just, I love it. It's, it's, uh, I just, it's, it's wonderful, and it's such a wonderful experience to be on, you know, with, with a group, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse. It's just a beautiful trip, and, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, we are all about the more the merrier, you know, yeah. and if you have any questions, if people, you know, like, you know, everything is in the, uh, in the packets, in the brochures, and if you have any questions other than that, like Catherine said, you can contact us. And um, and I just it, it is you will walk away from this experience. I can just tell you this because <clears throat> everyone has thus far. You just feel so warm inside and so um, transformed as a result of spending this time with with these the the, the, the people and the culture. And how they live, and um, you you just can't help but walk away feeling that, and uh, and that's that's what's the whole point of this trip, is for people to walk away having experienced that, and just and just like it's still here for me in case you couldn't tell, you know, <laughs> and it's been year. I mean, it's been four years since I first went to uh, mm -hmm. you know with family, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. So anyway, any questions? Don't hesitate to contact us. So let's have the we have um, Liz back with us, I think. So did anyone did it? Do we have any questions? Do we have anything? Did, does anyone have any wild and woolly experiences to share with us? Or <laughs> <laughs> has everyone? I know we're a little over time, so you know I just wanted to make sure we weren't neglecting anybody. Yeah, so um, I guess basically. I should take off my screen sharing. That's yeah. All. Okay, I'll stop sharing. There we go. Here we go. So, um, wow, wow. I mean, I'm just blown away by the, the, the tips that you've given. And, and it just, you know, it kind of makes sense, but we, we just, we don't really think about it sometimes. Um, you know, we're off on, oh my God, I'm going to have such a fun time. And then actually, if we do those, if we do what you've told us to do before we actually leave, then it's going to make our trip so much better. So great advice. Thank you so much, girls. Um, I would just, um, we've, we've had no questions um, at this moment in time. Um, and yeah, we, we have run over. Um, but I am just so tempted to sign up right now. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm looking at all those pictures and, and just thinking, wow, it just looks incredible. So, oh, Liz, we would have so much fun. Yeah, okay. I bet we would. We would. Yeah, I we can imagine. Would. I can imagine. It sounds like a great, great experience. So uh, I'll look at my calendar and see if I can come and join you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so thank you, ladies. Thank you for um, for sharing this time, sharing your wisdom and your knowledge, and sharing this opportunity. I think it's fantastic for everybody, uh, and, and it's going to be great. So. Thank you, so thank you so much, and um, we're all going to sign off now. If you want to say goodbye, ladies. All right. Bye. Thanks very bye much bye, for hosting everyone. us. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.